Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to take a look how we can work effectively with variables. So if you are working with flows and very complex complex flows, then you might be facing that the times of variable initialization and setting of variables is taking quite large space on your designer, this flow designer and the actual logics of the flow actually gets hidden into the bottom. So how to make it work, how to make it uh, look effectively in a readable, better readable format. So that we are going to take care today. So you can see I have opened one of my flow which is having number of variables initialized at top and later on I would like to do some logic and some processing and using those variables and reading and setting the values of those variables. So readability is not looking very good. The actual logic comes at the bottom and initial the first space is being just occupied with the initialization of variable. So that we are going to take a look how to cut down those space, how to just have one action to include all the variables which I would require for my flow and then we'll work on that. So I'll just go to my flows and create one instant cloud flow. And this cloud flow, I'll just uh, bind up with this list so that I can pick up the values from dynamically from this list. So I'll just for timing, I'll just choose my trigger and over here, I'll just delete this one and have an item created trigger. So I'll just bind this to my side and this side is home side and this is business unit list so my business unit list is having five or six fields and i would like to read all these uh, column values in my flow and do some processing and then again saving that to a different list so for next step instead of like creating variables for each and every field so your requirement may be different, but it's just like, uh, just try to understand the crux of it. Like rather than creating each and every variable for all the properties, we'll just use one variable and we'll read out the values from that single variable and setting up the values to the single variable as well. So I'll just say initialize variable and this variable, I'll just create where and bu array. So this variable will actually contain all my these sub variables, I would say sub uh, these columns value. So I have to initialize that type as an object and in value, I'll be constructing one JSON so that the JSON would have the property names. So whatever fields I'm having over here, so every property should be lying in my JSON. So I'll just create JSON. So I'll just start with curly braces and end up with curly braces so that it's a valid JSON and I'll start typing up my properties or the field values which I would like to use, read and set in my subsequent steps. So I'll just say bu title and initializing it with blank and copying this for other fields as well. Let's say five fields. So I'll just change the heading for this bu head and this would be i'll just take a look by the center and this would be location and last one let's say my business units vision so this is a valid json i'll just remove the comma at the last and this is a valid json i'll just name this my variable as variable array of PUs. So now rather than declaring or initializing five different variables, I'll just, I have just clubbed them into a single object variable. So this cut downs my, that extra spaces for those five variables. I'll just save it. And in the subsequent step, which is a major one, I'll be reading and writing the values to these variables. So to start with, I'll just set the value which I got from this item. So whenever this item is created, my flow will trigger and will set the value from that item to my this object array. For that, so I'll be using one compose action. And in this compose action, 
I'll go to expression and start using set property function. So this set property function, if I just say bracket, then it starts saying my set property object property name and value to it. So now I can just pick my object. So that object I can pick from dynamic content of this variable. And the next one, I'll just pass on the property name. So it's single quotes. I'll just prop pass the property name as bu title and now the value. So now again, of the value I can pick up from my this dynamic content and which could be title. I just scroll down to bottom to find the title. So now you can see I have this set property variable array bu title and the body title is set. So I'll just say OK. And now I got this my property set into this compose action. But now I have to assign this back to this variable. Otherwise, it will not be assigned. It will the value should uh, be again binded to my variable. So let me do that again with one set variable action. So in this set variable, I'll just pick up my variable and I'll just pass on the output of this previous compose action. So I'll just say save. So this way I have just binded one property to my this uh, object array with title. So if I just uh, do a test run, let me just do so that you can see how the property is being binded. So I'm just saying test business unit and saving it. My flow should trigger. I'll just go to my flow to check my flow triggered and I'll just go inside. I'll see what compose is having. So compose does have this BU title set task BU, which was the item title value we entered in the list. And if I just go back to my set variable, I would see this my variable is now containing this value. So it's being set. If I don't do this set variable, then this output operation is of no use. I need to assign that back to that variable so that it can be saved. All right. So we achieved one step that is of setting the variable properties. So you can do the same compose action for another values, another set of values, for example, budget center, business location, BU vision. So you can do. And for example, let me just copy this piece and do it for my this second property. So I'll just do that for second property. And in this one, I'll just say the property name should be, let's say BU head. And the output of this one should be the trigger output. I'll just use as the dynamic content as in BU head. And I'll just pro update. So this is second compose. So I need to again copy my this set variable. And so now we have set up two properties. And now the next question would be how to read the values out of this um, variable B business unit. So for that, for example, uh, whenever a person entered uh, this one item over there in this list, you may want to pass on this item to a different uh, altogether uh, to a different application or to a different SharePoint list, then you have to read out. You have to use one compose action again. So I'll just use compose to read out the values. And in this compose action, I'll be using I'll be using dynamic content again. So you can see I have this variable BU array. So if I just click on it, you can just directly copy this also or you can just go to the P code so that you can copy the variable. Not this at the rate sign like variables BU array. So you can just delete it and go to your expression once again. So in this expression, we got this variable BU array and now the property which we want to read under the square brackets, for example, is BU title. And if I say, okay, 
so it will give me the value of that BU title which we have set up earlier so if I just save it and rerun it let me just create a new item so test BU2 and business unit head let's say like let me put my name so this should trigger my flow I'll just go back and we'll wait for the flow to trigger okay so it ran successfully I'll just go inside so as I said in initial compose actions we set up these two values and which we read from that list and in the final one how to read out that property which we saw set out initially is this is how we got this output in this compose action now you can while saving it a new list you can use this output of this compose action so basically two operations setting the value using compose action and then reading the value again using compose action just setting the property with set property function and reading the property directly with property of that variable question mark and the BU title so this is how you can do you can cut down the additional initialization or actions for initialized variables and do the same operations with variables and using those variables in your flow so I believe like uh, this would be helpful for you too so that's it for today if you find the video helpful please do subscribe like and comment if you have any questions thanks for today